So now that we've talked a little bit about the microsite, let's transition a little and talk about email communications. Um, we actually manage separate communications plans for, for those who are prospects, who are applicants, and also who are um, admits. And so the types of messages that we send to them, again, go back to whether they fall into one of those three particular categories. Um, as far as types of messages, that can be things like event reminder, application updates, uh, you're missing documents, we're you know, actually moving forward with review of your materials. Um, but I, I think some simple things to keep in mind too in designing communications are to take advantage of the custom fields that are built within Connect. Even simple things like putting in the individual's first name um, can make a big difference. But then also again, especially with, as it pertains to content, making certain that the, the, the content that is put in emails is really specific and useful to the particular candidate and where they are with respect to the application process. This here is a screenshot of one of our email templates. Um, a couple of things that I really like about this. Our university logo is uh, displayed at the top left-hand corner of the actual template. Uh, so I think for us, one of the things that we wanted to make certain in terms of integrating all the parts together is to make certain that there's a very strong visual identity as well that reflects the university and school brand. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of call your attention to that as we go through. The header piece here, so this image with let's get together, um, that changes depending on the message that gets, to that gets sent to students. So again, it's a, an additional level of detail that helps to support the content, the segmentation, um, and really the customization in terms of helping to usher candidates through your process. Um, it's an additional level of detail, while, while seemingly minor, that, that perhaps makes a difference. Um, and then we also embed some social media links to our Facebook feed, our Twitter feed, as well as our Flickr page, um, because we know that today's students are really using these types of technology. So we build that into our template so that they can um, access these types of resources and, and learn more about the program and the university. So setting it up, I'm going to show you our VIP page in just a moment. And as I was just saying, though, you know, the, the branding and the visual aspects of it are critically important. You know, when we first implemented Connect, we worked very closely with the Hobson's team to make certain that the experience between our collateral, our web presence, and our interface with the Hobson's platform was consistent. We wanted it to be a really streamless experience for, for the student um, and for them to not consciously realize that they were perhaps going through sites that were hosted by other vendors. Um, and we carried that experience out with our microsite, as I just shared with you. So um, for us, the, the visual aspect is a very important piece of it. Um, and with the, the templates and the filters, you know, I, I think organization is critically important. How you, again, work with your data and also set up the messages and the templates. Um, staying organized will be important because it helps you to be more impactful with the audiences that you are trying to reach and the messages that you are looking to communicate with them. So our VIP page, um, again, is, is one of those aspects that is very much user-oriented. Um, the content that appears on the page is based off of preferences and choices that the, the user selects as they share information with you. Um, and that information that, that displays to them changes as they progress through the pipeline. So, you know, again, some of the details that a, a student that sees as if they are in the prospect phase is very different from the information that someone sees once they get admitted to a program. Um, and to give you a sense of kind of the, the content that ends up changing, uh, my status, so if they're in the prospect or the application phase, they see information about um, their particular submission materials that they are, are waiting to confirm that have been received by our office. They have information to a program brochure, and for us that changes across whether they're looking at an MBA or an MS program. Um, their program of interest, so if they're in the prospect phase and they're not certain whether they want to do an MBA in finance or an MS in finance, they have the option to change the, the fields, and that will change the content that shows up on the VIP page. Um, we also include student and faculty sp uh, spotlights on the VIP page, as well as list to deadlines, which do vary across MBA and MS programs. So again, you can kind of get a sense for the level of customization that's possible within the VIP page, um, which again, just helps to enhance the experience for the students as they're going through the process. So this is a screenshot of our actual VIP page. Um, I know that it, perhaps the text is really difficult to read, so I'll help you guys out. But again, first and foremost, you see the university brand and logo at the, the top left hand corner of the screen. On the right side, you see um, links to both our online application as well as our events portal so that they can take a look at the different information sessions we have coming up, um, recruitment events that we'll be participating in. And then on this main page, in the top left-hand corner is your profile details, so your name, the program that you're interested in. For this particular student, 
I think we are in the prospect phase. So, you know, some next step reminders that would be helpful to someone in that particular phase. Attending an information session, planning a class visit, um, connecting with a graduate student ambassador. Again, types of details that are relevant to where they are and, and the types of information that they're looking to find. You see as well some of the social media links, our web address. In the center is actually information about the particular program. So a brief overview and summary of the program of interest, which in this case is our MS in finance. Um, moving over to the right, you see a copy of the brochure, which is specific to our, our finance program. And then, even though he's not a student, he's a faculty member, a faculty profile. So this was our former MS Finance Program Director. This was a way for us to further showcase um, some of the resources that are available to students with interest in this program. And he was happy to talk with students if they had additional questions. So um, again, this is one of those fields that would dynamically change based on the program of interest. So if it was an accounting program, an accounting faculty member would show up. If it was an MBA program, it could be a potentially an MBA student that would show up. But again, that level of customization and being able to provide other touch points was um, what we were looking to do. At the very bottom are some, some um, details that you can't exactly see, but basically information about financial aid, being able to live in Washington, um, and then also um, campus visit programs and events and things like that. So I mentioned as we were going through um, things initially that, you know, once the students are admitted to the program, the experience in terms of it being customized and to their particular interests and preferences continues. And so um, for us, once students get admitted, they are invited to join an admitted student community. Um, and the platform that we use to power this community is Ning. Um, and what it is is a, is a private social network for students um, that have been admitted to the programs. We allow students from all of our degree programs, so all 10 programs, to join the particular community. Within the site, there are separate subgroups based off of their particular programs. So there's one for the full-time MBA, one for each of the MS programs. Um, and what it does is allows them to interact with other admitted students that have been in, who, who have been offered admission. Our student ambassadors are also on the site and they basically serve as mentors and guides to students in terms of welcoming them to the community, um, helping to answer questions. Um, they do a lot of that work for us and so that's really a nice touch point because um, while they have access to talking to students and alumni and all of these individuals throughout the process, um, it's nice to kind of have a student to student interaction to welcome them into this particular um, community and in particular channel in the process. Other couple things that go with that are available within the Ning platform: discussion forums, um, chat features. Um, so it's again, you know, as we look at it from a customization perspective, a really nice way to continue the experience beyond the interaction that they have in the application process, and to prepare to transition them for their arrival on campus for those of them that make the decision ultimately to enroll. And so in kind of summarizing things up, I, I kind of want to leave things with a few key points in terms of putting it all together and, and making the full use of it. The first is this idea of segmentation and being able to really hone in on your audience and the message. Um, I, I think that, again, a part of being able to make good use of the different tools that are available um, and to make it an effective experience for not only the, the recipients but also your own your own self and, and your teams is being able to be clear on who it is that you are communicating to at a given time and what it is that you want to tell them. So again, segmentation and staying organized specifically within um, this system is really important and very helpful in being able to do that. Next is a bit of, of timeline. I think that, you know, as I was saying, with a small team and a, a large scope of programs to be, to be working with, um, being able to stay on top of things is really important and, and being able to use things within the system like automated communications, which I didn't touch on it in great detail in this particular presentation, but that's a huge piece of it. You know, you have the functionality within the system to be able to set up automated messages. Um, so take advantage of that because that can be very, very helpful in, in being able to um, maintain relevancy with the different audiences that you are communicating with. Aesthetics, I think, are really important. And again, that goes back to the branding, the visual piece of it. Um, there's a certain um, consideration that is made with respect to the visual identity being consistent with the messaging and, and the experience that users have. And so I think that um, taking a time to address those details as well will also be valuable to the experience that the students have as they go through the process. Um, and lastly, you know, these systems and, and processes can become increasingly complex and especially as you expand the number of degree programs, it becomes increasingly more so. But um, 
my recommendation really is to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we talked about this morning are not particularly complex, but if you, you maintain the focus and, and keep it focused on, you know, delivering the right message and, and staying organized, it really goes a long way.